Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. The other day, I shared with you how to create these three pieces using the Merriest Frames hybrid embossing folder, and today I thought I would share three cards, starting with a quick and easy card. And we're going to be using the Merriest Moments bundle, which is that Merriest Moments stamp set, and then the uh, Merriest Frames embossing folder that also comes with those Merriest Frames dies. So since I've already shown you how to use the hybrid embossing folder and the dies, we're going to start with the stamping. I've got my sentiment here and some real red ink. And these cards are going to go from uh, a little, I'm going to call it stepped up simple uh, stamping to uh, more involved cards as we work through the three cards. Okay. So there we have our sentiment. Let me close my ink. That's all the stamping we're going to do. And I've already used one of the Merriest Frames dies to cut this out. You'll notice this has a little stitching around the edge, so a nice little detail. And I've got my card base and we're ready to assemble. And this is a five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're going to use uh, this piece, and this was just jade cardstock that I embossed on the other day. And let me find my dimensionals. They have escaped over here. Okay, and let's just add dimensionals all around on the back of this. Make sure that you give your piece of cardstock enough support. Okay. And take these off. Let's line that up with a grid lines. And put this on. And then I have some of the new um, gold shimmer ribbon. Can you see the shimmer there? It's really lovely. And I'm just going to take a piece and double it like so before cutting. And I'm going to give these a little bit of an angled end. And angle cutting helps to keep them from fraying. It's not a hundred percent, but they fray less angled and they're prettier than if you put them on with a blunt end. And then we need a couple of mini glue dots and just going to pick that up on our ribbon to make sure that it has a little sticky in holding it together. Okay. And then a couple more dimensionals. And this quick and easy card will be done for us crafters it's time to start thinking about our Christmas cards if we haven't already I think I saw yesterday that we're down to less than 150 days so and there we go just a, a quick and easy simple Christmas card using the new Merriest Moments bundle. Let me clean up from this and I'll come back and do two more. For the second card, we're going to use the Merriest Moments bundle. Now again, that's the stamp set, the Merriest Frames hybrid embossing folder, and the Merriest Frames dies. And remember when you bundle, you receive a 10% discount over buying those items separately. And those will be in the catalog that goes live on August 3rd. 
if you haven't yet um, requested one of those catalogs, you can do that in the description below. So I've got my sentiment, my real red ink, and I'm stamping on very vanilla. Let's put this aside and close up my real red. And then I'm going to grab my just J shaded spruce, sorry, my shaded spruce ink and this little pine bow, making sure it's good and inked up. Okay, so I want one. two, and three of those. Let me close up my ink, and we're done with our stamping. So I need to die cut these, and I've already done that using the frame die, which gives you that little stitched edge. And then I've got my three pine bough sprigs here. So let's start and put our card together. I've got a crumb cake base that's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And we're going to add a layer inside that's very vanilla. Oops. And that piece measures four by five and a quarter. taking my time and checking to make sure that I'm straight and even. Love that the multi-purpose glue gives me a moment to move things. And then I've used that Merriest Frames in 3D embossing folder, the hybrid embossing folder, to emboss a piece of Misty Moonlight. And let's add some dimensionals behind this layer. And this piece measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So we're just going to get a narrow um, frame look of this crumb cake base. Let's take our dimensionals off. The backing that is. And check that I'm straight. Okay, and then next I have this layer that's been uh, used with the hybrid embossing folder as well. Again, you can see how to do this uh, with the embossing folder with the video that I shared a couple of days ago. I will try to remember to link that here um, at the end of this video in case you want to go back and check the ways to use the hybrid embossing folder. Okay. And I think I want one more dimensional over here. The debossed side is just as pretty as the embossed side. Okay, those are all off. And we're going to overlay this so we get that nice, those little embossed stars or snowflakes on our outside border. And then next I've got my sentiment, and we're going to add dimensionals to that. Okay. And then let's take these three sprigs and arrange them so that we've got kind of a bouquet of sprigs and add some multi-purpose glue on the back of each of those. And they're going to go right in here at this upper left corner. OK. 
Okay. Make sure they're pushed down well. And then take our backing off with these dimensionals. Okay, next I want to use some of this real red sheer ribbon and we're going to tie a bow with that. And let's unwind this and check my size just a little bit here. Okay, so we'll tighten this up now. Do the tighten again. There we go. Hold the back of the bow. And give that a little floof around so that they're all facing the right way. And then we're going to come in here and cut that diagonal. And this one's just a little longer than I'd like it to be. Okay, and then we need glue dots. Oops. I like to put a couple on there to hold, and it holds the, um, the knot as well so that your bow is not shifting its shape. Okay, so we'll put that in there. And then... We're going to add a few um, of the red basic rhinestones. Few meaning one. Just a little something here to give it some glitz. And there's the first of our stepped up merriest moments cards. So let me clean up and I'll be back with our third card. For this third and most stepped up card, we're going to use the Merriest Moments Bundle, which is the photopolymer stamp set, the Merriest Frames hybrid embossing folder, and the Merriest Frames dies. Now I've shown you how to use these pieces together in a previous video. I'll have that linked here at the end of today's video. So you can go check it out. I'm going to start with a layer that's been cut with the frame die that's in the merriest frames. And my Blushing Bride ink. And one of the poinsettias from merriest moments. And I'm just going to lay that here and ink it up. And stamp here in this corner. And we'll ink this up and stamp down in this corner. I don't think I mentioned this is very vanilla that I'm stamping on. Let's move the Blushing Bride ink out of the way and the piece of scrap paper. That way I can line up here on my grid sheet and pull out my real red ink. And I'm going to add my sentiment. And just checking to see if I'm centered right, left, top, and bottom, and hoping that I'm straight as well. That looks pretty good. Okay. And let me set this out of the way now and bring in another piece of very vanilla and my shaded spruce ink. And I'm going to stamp three of the pine boughs again. Let's turn this one this way. Okay. And let me step off camera just a moment and die cut these. 
Now that my leaves, or leaves, my pine boughs are die cut, we're going to do a little more stamping. I've got a piece of Blushing Bride that is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And, and I'm going to use the speckle or splatter stamp from the Marius Moments stamp set and ink that with Versamark and stamp right around the edges of my cardstock. Just going to move this, trying to not touch it. And just using my fingers on the edges. That way I won't leave any fingerprint oils on here for the um, embossing powder to stick to. And I'm just kind of creating a frame here with this uh, speckled splatter stamp. Let's turn this one more time. And fill in this last bit. Okay, we'll move that out of the way and open up my piece of scrap paper here and my gold stamp and emboss powder and we're just going to sprinkle on and tap off and turn and come around to this other side. Okay, and then let's pick up my scrap paper and pour this right back in my jar and close this up and give this a quick swish to get the loose bits off. And now let's heat up my heat tool a moment. And I'm going to heat from behind and probably for this uh, particular embossing, it wouldn't matter whether I was on the front or uh, back, but generally I heat from behind because it keeps from uh, blowing embossing powder uh, speckles across your layer. Okay, so here's our pretty embossed frame in the gold, and let's put our card together. So I've got a thick, very vanilla base that's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And I'm going to start with dimensionals on the back of my Blushing Bride piece that we just embossed. Make sure you give your cards plenty of dimensionals so that they're not going to sag. Cutting at this four and a quarter by 11, you get a standard size card, but this one, uh, cutting it this way, it makes it easy to stand it up on a, a mantle or a table if you display cards or your recipients do. And then next I've got uh, the final Just Jade piece that I cut in the video uh, that I shared. The link to that will be at the end of this video. So I'm just going to tuck in a few of the mini dimensionals out here along the edge to give this piece support. 
you could choose to adhere it flat but I like my dimension so I'm going to add dimensionals and the mini dimensionals are perfect for this I'll do one more here and then let's put a couple of full-size dimensionals here in the middle Okay, let's move those out of the way. I think I want one more here. And now let's pull the backing off of all of these. Oops. There we go. Trying to be delicate with those little guys up there on the end that are a more detailed cut. our last one and gosh that's pretty just like that the just jade on the blushing bride okay and then next we're going to add some of this blushing bride frayed ribbon I love uh, the texture you've got the nice grow grain here in the center and then this little frayed edge is just awesome so I'm going to do a quick <clears throat> measure here and cut first. I know I don't normally cut first. And I'm going to cut this way. Otherwise, it's going to look a little wonky. There we go. And then I'm going to use many glue dots to put this down. Let's take my ribbon here along the edges. And then we'll put one in the middle. Now when you put this down, don't uh, stretch it super tight. You don't want it to be causing your... Um, hard to to bend and buckle and just about the midpoint okay let's move these out of the way and then let's see where here's my sentiment and I want those greenery boughs that we had and we're going to spread those out and Put some multi-purpose glue on the ends. And stick those up in this corner, just like we did in the previous card. Okay, let's add some dimensionals here. And then let's go for a little bit of embellishment. We're going to use some of the wonderful gems. I love these. They've got a little bit of, I don't know if you can see the little bit of gold fleck in them. And we're just going to add a couple up here. And then come down here and add a smaller one off here to the side and that's just enough bling for our merriest moments uh, final stepped up card thank you for joining me today please give this a video a thumbs up and share it with your card making friends if you're in the United States please do some of your stampin up shopping in my store 
and when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Have a great day. Bye.